The two ways that I really like to use these words are by blending and segmenting. So let's use the word dip as our example for how we might practice blending and segmenting. So here's my little blender robot that I talk about. Her name is Blenda. And with Blenda, I might show some cubes. And I would say to my student, or I'd say to my child, if I'd say, all right, I'm going to say some sounds, some phonemes. And I want you to blend those sounds together and tell me what word it is that I am making. And so they wouldn't be able to see the word written out here, dip, and you would have that covered up. The first sound is d. The next sound is i. The last sound is p. D, i. What happens when we blend those sounds together? Dip. Dip. Oh, we got the word dip. Now you don't have to use cubes. You could also use your fingers. Dip. 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 Or another way I really like to do this is I like to do it on my arm. So I tap the sounds. Dip. And then I sort of wipe them together. Dip. And that's a great way for our more physical students to sort of feel what we're talking about when we're talking about blending the sounds. The next way you can practice is with segmenting or breaking apart those sounds. So I have a little robot that I've created here, Siggy the Segmenter. And I like to imagine that the word is a puzzle and we are trying to break apart the pieces of the puzzle. And those pieces would be the phonemes, the individual sound. So we would say to our students, okay, so the word is dip. Can you tell me the sounds in dip so that Siggy can understand? And I might use my cubes again, as I, I tend to do. And I go, let's see, dip, 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 dip. Eh. and I'd sort of work to stretch those sounds out. Another thing you could do at home, I really like these little fidget toys. These are something I found at the dollar section at Target, but I've seen them in lots of dollar sections. And they're sort of like these rubber bandy fidgets and you can stretch them. So you can actually imagine using this as a way of sort of stretching out the word dip to try to hear the sounds. Again, this is a great tool for working with our more squirmy learners who need to be moving. So we might say, okay, dip, dip, dip. Oh, and I say dip, 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 dip. And we're just sort of getting those letters stretched farther and farther apart, imagining stretching out the word, and then we can oh, snap it back together, dip. So there's different ways we can practice, but the whole point is always seeing if we can make it fun and enjoyable and sort of gamifying these, these elements of how we read. Mm -hmm.